you'll have three to four, and they'll run pretty much equal length. And they'll be made out of like a hard fiberglass that'll fit in what are called batten pockets here in hand. And so what they do is they help maintain sail shape on the aft portion of our sail. And the reason why we want to have proper sail shape is because the sail is actually like a wing of an airplane. So it wants to be curved more, more like so, if you will. All right, go ahead, next slide, please. All right, so letter G, what do we call that? The head. The head, good. All right, how about letter D? Foot. Foot, okay. And letter A? Batons. Batons. All right, what do the battens do? They fit with the batten pockets. <laughs> yeah, you're right, they do. <laughs> but what, what, do they do, what do they do to the sail? Why are they, why are they important? They help give it shape. Exactly, they help give it shape. All right, how about F? F. Excellent, and then bonus point, brownie point, if you can tell me what B is. Batten space? No, nope. this, this is what we call the roach of our sail. And so the roach is from, see the clue here? The clue, all the way to the head of the sail. If we draw a straight line, that area is what we call the roach of our sail. <laughs> That's another good one. <laughs> Ceiling, ceiling's full. Ceiling's full. Yeah, Roche. Yeah. We're being we're being videotaped here, so let's keep that to a minimum. All right, go ahead. Next slide, please. All right. So now we have what's called standing rigging, and standing rigging is anything on the boat that doesn't move. And so it's going to be this big metal pole here, which we call the mast. It's going to be the wires on either side. We'll go over those in a minute, and also the boom. So remember the boom runs horizontal. And the easy way to remember that is you're gonna see that thing swing across and if it hits you in the head, it's gonna sound like boom. So that's a very easy way to remember it. Your mass is gonna stay relatively in the same place. So it's gonna be the vertical, what they call the vertical spar. Next we have different wires. And our wires are gonna help us basically stabilize the entire rig. If we didn't have them and we raise our sails, the mass would fall over and we wouldn't be sailing. So to start off with, we have our headstay. So our headstay goes from the bow of the boat all the way to the head of our mast. So just like we had the head of a sail, we have a head of a mast. Now on our boats, we have what's called a fractional rig. And so we won't have a headstay. What we'll have is what's called a jib stay. And it'll run right about to where, a little north of where the spreaders are. So we have a jib stay. You can also call that a fore stay as well. Now on the opposite end, you've got your back stay here. So your back stay, will almost always run from the head of, your, head of your mast down to the stern of the boat. So think fore and aft, you have stays. And now side to side, you have what are called shrouds. And so there's gonna be in total four shrouds on, on most boats. So you're gonna have your, what's called your upper shroud, which is gonna go almost the head of your mast, if not to the head. And then you're gonna have your lower shroud, which is gonna go from that same point they're actually called chain plates. We're going to go from the chain plates up to where the spreader is. And so what spreaders are, spreaders take the upper shroud and they help hold it out. If I, if I had a whiteboard, I'd be able to show you exactly how it goes. But essentially, here's your mast. Now without a spreader, you would have a very small angle where the shroud meets your mast. Now if you add that spreader in, <coughs> it's going to kick that shroud out, which then increases the angle that you have uh, at where the shroud meets the mast. So what it does, it helps provide more stability for that mast and more strength. All right, so remember, upper shroud is typically going to be on the outside. It's also going to go almost to the top of our uh, top of our mast. And our lower shroud is going to go right to the spreader. Okay, and then also we've got boom bang. <coughs> Nowadays, this, this is probably universal. Almost every boat will have a boom bang. And it's connected to from the boom here down to the mast there. And so what that does, it does several things. Well, it's also dependent on what kind of boom bang you have, but it's gonna help control your sail and provide proper sail shape. We're gonna go into that next class period, so don't, don't worry about the boom bang too much. All right, and here's a better look at, at the water line. So that LWL I was talking about, you can see this white stripe along the whole <coughs> boat. That is our LWL. That's where the water, that's where it'll sit in the water. All right. Go ahead, next slide, please. All right, so how about G? Yeah. <coughs> All right, and H. 
Forsted. Good. So we can look at since it's not going to the head of the head of the mast, it's going to be a forsted. All right. And how about F here? Okay, which one? Lower. Lower shroud. Excellent. All right. And how about B? Excellent. And C? Spreaders. Spreaders. Excellent. All right. And finally, A. <coughs> Upper shroud. Upper shroud. Burgers. All right. Next slide. All right. So now we have running rigging. And running rigging is anything that on a boat that moves. So we have an example of it here. And this is probably taken from a main sheet of our 420s. And so running rigging, once again, is anything that moves, opposed to standing rigging that doesn't move. So this, can, this is going to be all, basically all the line that's on our boat. So the, uh, the four main pieces of running, running rigging we're going to have to worry about for now are our halyards. So we have a main halyard, which is going to be attached to our main sail, and our jib halyard, which is going to be attached to our jib. And how that'll work is there's, at the head of our sail, there's a, there's a plate. And so this, one of these, or the main halyard, for example, will attach the head of the sail at that plate. It'll then run through the mast or on the outside of the mast down to the cockpit, so where we're going to be sitting. All right, and that's going to enable us to hoist the sail, so bring it up. And we're going to be able to do that both with our main and with our jib. So we're going to have two halyards. So remember with halyards that it's going to raise the sail. So it's going to move it vertically. Now, we're going to want to uh, be able to adjust our sail horizontally as well. So what we're going to be, need to use are our sheets. And so, as we can see in the picture here, we have our main sheet. And it's going to, be, it's going to run from the stern of our boat, with the transom in this position, through what are called blocks. Any pulley that you see on a boat, you automatically want to call it a block. So just to, just to be warned. And so it's going to run through these blocks and then down into the, into the cockpit. And so that main sheet, there's only one of them, and that's going to control basically the lateral movement of our mainsail. So depending on where the wind is in relation to our boat, we're going to want to either bring our sail in or let our sail out. And that's how we're going to do with our main. Now, with our jib, this gets a little more complicated because we have two sheets. So we have our port sheet and our starboard sheet. And we can also call these lazy sheets and working sheets because, for example, if there's going to be pressure on our sail, we're going to want to use that pressure to make the boat move forward. And so since we have two sheets, we're going to want to use one to control the sail, let it in, and then bring it, uh, or let it out, and then bring, also bring it back in. And so that sheet that we're using, we're going to want to call that the working sheet. Now the opposite sheet, the sheet that we're not using, that's going to be called the lazy sheet. Right. Any questions on the sheets? Pretty simple. It's just all about controlling the controlling the sail in and out laterally. And then here's another here's a good look at that centerboard I talked about earlier. The centerboard will actually swing up into the inside of our boat, opposed to being pulled up. All right, go ahead. Next slide. So, what part of the boat steers the boat? The tiller. The tiller. The tiller. No, the rudder. The rudder. The rudder steers the boat, and the tiller steers the rudder. Always, th always think about that because is the tiller is the tiller on the water? No. He's not. No. So is, is it able to deflect water from one side to the other? Oh my God. No. <laughs> You're right. Probably not. All right. So looking forward on the boat, what do you call the right side? Starboard. 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 Pretty easy. All right. And what is the leading edge of a sail called? <laughs> Luff. Excellent. And so, what is the difference between standing rigging and running rigging? <laughs> right, sailing, sailing doesn't move. All right, and what sail has two sheets? Jib. And what what do we call these sheets? Lazy. Working and lazy. Yes, right. Working and lazy. All right, go ahead. Next slide. I still even care. So now we have points of sail. So we can see the wind direction at the top of this uh, top of the slide here. It's pointing directly towards this, this first boat. And at this point, we're not going to be able to sail at all. There's going to be a 45 degree angle on either side of the wind. So here's the wind. Imagine a 45 degree angle right here and right here. And it makes up a total of 90 degrees. That's called our 